Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year, my Legion. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, my Legion. Hey, my Legion. How y'all doing today? I'm here today to do my New Year's Eve special. And I have a, a bunch of ideas. And I'm going to add a whole, add a whole bunch of stuff in, including uh, after this video is done, I'm going to edit a food review. I was planning on putting on uh, up at noon tomorrow. I'm going to edit it and add on to this. And thank you, thanks to the scheduling, I can put this to upload right at midnight on New Year's, when New Year's happens. So, happy New Year's, everybody. And I hope you like this video. There's going to be, like, talk about uh, the stuff from Army, about how I celebrate New Year's in the Army, and how I usually celebrate New Year's. Uh, take this off. Uh, how I celebrate... Uh, you know, food and drink review, weather updates, business updates, a movie review, and I'm going to edit that video on, too. So, first of all, I want to talk to you about, uh, well, I'll do the food review first. Now, usually, I didn't have any wine. I had a bunch of wine that my sister actually got. Christmas, uh, New Year's, I mean, Christmas Eve and New Year's. I mean, on Christmas Eve and on Christmas. I should have commented on that thing. That's my fault. And, uh, I see that thing come across a lot. And I didn't get any this time. I got this. This was on uh, special. This for, I guess this is left over for Christmas. 25% off a Dollar General. I got for $2.09. This is Welch's, Welch's Sparkling uh, Red Grape Juice Cocktail. Non-alcoholic. I should have got more. This is the only one I got. Uh, next time I go to the Dollar General in... Why a close why if I have any more I might get some more if it's good if it's good and along with that I'm going to have this I got from Dollar Tree Silver State brand pepper jack cheese I guess Maine Nevada uh only dollar for six ounces which I don't think is bad now the one thing about these are always limited these uh these packs like this you always have to put in like a plastic uh, Ziploc bag. And I was watching the news uh, this afternoon. They were talking about, you know, wine and cheese is all you need and stuff like that. I didn't have any champagne or some champagne. You know, so I mean, so I was thinking that I'd do, I should do this and review some cheese. And no, it's not exactly wine, but it's close enough, at least for this video. Yeah, I remember uh, getting invited to a lot of wine and cheese parties at different car dealerships in the 90s and, and early 2000s. And uh, Edinburgh, and then in Peachtree, they had some fancy ones too. Dad and I, we used to go down there and invite some, usually on like a Friday or Saturday night. or And it was nice. And some of the places actually had lobster, and they had like a real buffet going on. You know, just look around, pretend like you're interested in stuff like that. And you go there, I mean, they invite you. It's pretty, it was pretty cool. They don't do that anymore. I miss those days. Well, anyways, let's go ahead and open this up. What's up first? Now this is uh, not a cork, because some of these had like corks to it. This is like a really regular screw top. I have to get the, I don't know, I think start here, maybe, I don't know. I'm going to find out, hopefully, get all this gold off. Well, it's going to be one that's going to be tough to open up. Usually some of these are usually easy to open. I get up the top, may I just, wait, wait if I just, if I just. Oh, crap. Just do it like that. That's easy. You heard it. Heard a hiss when it came open. That sounds good. It smells really good. $2.09. Okay, let's open. Let's get a... Have a piece of cheese. Cut the cheese. So that is too. The Silver State brand Pepper Jack Cheese. Okay, what kind of peppers are in this? Do they have like... It's just jalapeno peppers. Huh. This is jalapeno peppers. There must be different colors in it too. That's cool. Okay, let's open it up. Hopefully this is good. So sometimes I had some cheese that hadn't been too good. But this is a dollar tree for a dollar to see if it's worth it. But usually, you know, I get 
I see places you look like uh, Pearjack cheese be like two ninety nine a pound, so not too unreasonable. I wonder who the hell is calling. God damn it! Hold on. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Mom. Hang on. Okay. Yeah, I'm back. I had to, I got a call from Mom who wished me Happy New Year, which was very nice for her. I know a lot of times I talk about when we used to fight growing up and stuff like that, but it was true, you know what I mean? It was nice for, for her to call and wish me Happy New Year, though. So that was cool. Uh, so going back to the food review, I cut up the cheese here and here, and you see, like, the bits of piece of cheese in there all jalapeno okay and I got the Welch's sparkling red grape that was 209 that was reduced at like 25 cent off if this is good if I if I find any more uh, the, uh Dollar General next time I go there Friday I might get some more if there's any more left because a whole bunch of that wasn't sold and then they had like the really I mean a lot of the Christmas stuff 20 cent off and they had a really fancier chocolates they said, well, these aren't on sale. I was like, thanks a lot. You know, but oh, well, no big deal. I got plenty. I got plenty of snacks and stuff like that. I don't need to buy any more. But I will buy some more of this if they're there next time I go there Friday. So let's go ahead and try it out. Try this out first. That's good. That's really good. I don't know if I reviewed this last year or not, but it's delicious. That's a 10 out of 10. Man. It's good. Like I said, we used to get invited to car dealership for wine and cheese tastings and stuff like that, but they don't do that anymore. At least I, to my knowledge, they don't. Let's try some of this cheese. It's pretty good. It's not bad. Because all this, um, usually if I get, I usually get sliced at the deli or something they have in the blog. It tastes just like a block of cheese if you get it. And sometimes they say, like, some of these things you get for Dollar Tree is not a really good value, but six ounces for a dollar. Usually, if I get on sale, I'm sure if I might be two ninety nine a pound or Sometimes it might be low as a dollar ninety nine a pound, but it's still that's not bad or two forty nine a pound usually if it's on sale. But this cheese is pretty good. I give this a let's try some more. You have about a nine out of ten. Let's try it. I'm try a swig of this and uh, some cheese. Try some cheese and try a swig of this. It's okay. It's about 9 out of 10, but it's all right. Let's talk about what I usually do for New Year's and how it changed when I was in the Army. Usually I don't go out for New Year's. Um, when I was a kid, usually New Year's, um, whenever I was able to stay up and stuff like that. New Year's pretty much this, uh, was pretty much watching Dick Clark rock at New Year's Eve on uh ABC. I remember in '79, I went. Uh, I went in fifth grade, beginning '79, and in the '80s. I remember the one main thing I remember. They had the village people on, and they did some song called "Welcome to the '80s" or something like that, a long time ago. And now a lot of these things, a lot of these bands, I just don't connect with. You know, they had. I I don't know. Maybe it's just for younger kids or something like that. I'm too old for them and stuff. Um, but it was cool. And then they had that song. Uh, 
you know, party like 1999. And they still play that song now, even though it's way past 1999 or in the 2000s. And I remember when they had uh, the whole Y2K uh, scare. And WWE was going to do this special thing right at New Year's. Uh, New Year's, they're going to have this big count out, countdown. Now, I remember watching on USA, and it would, Chris Jericho came out, and he was Y2J. And some people saying, "Why is he?" That's back when w, uh, WWE was still good. Anyways, I mean, a lot of times, that's what we did. Even even after uh, the army and stuff, pretty much stayed home. Uh, I know Fox. When Fox did have Nita special, they had Guns N' Roses on there. I think I missed it, but they had Axl Rose saying the F word on there. And <clears throat> not too long ago, well, it was a, well, actually it was a while ago. I remember taping like a New Year's special that was on uh, Jay Leno. They had Motley Crue on there. I think Vince McNeil said, Happy F and New Year, Tommy. And they got banned from the show. And he said that on purpose. He's like, uh oh, did I say that? I mean, or something like that, but he said that on purpose. Anyone knows that. And they were banned from, uh, from NBC for a while. And then I guess Tommy, when that made news, and then Tommy Lee had a reality show, and then he was back on Tonight Show, and Jay Leno addressed that. Or they would be either banned from NBC or Tonight Show. And then they had Tommy Lee was on. This was way after the Pamela Anderson tape from Tommy Lee. And then they mentioned that on there. So that's about it for that. Um, trying to think. So in the Army, when I was in the Army, I was in the Army from November. What, November 24th, 1987, November 22nd, 1991. And I got out of the Army two days early because the 24th fell on a Sunday. And I always felt like, you know, them calling people back after they were, I, that I owed them, that they thought I owed them two, uh, the two extra days and they called me back. That never happened. And usually when I was in the Army around, uh, I was in basic training and they had, they shut down for Christmas and New Year's and stuff. So we actually got to go home after about five weeks in the Army. And I know on Fort Bragg, I took, well, I mean, when we, when, Every month in the Army, every full month in the Army, you got two and a half hours, I mean, two and a half days of leave every month. So we took, after five weeks, we took the, like 15 days off, and you're always a, already in the hole for leave. And then I had a chance after I got out of basic to take a break before going to AIT. Maybe I should have done that, but I didn't do that. Um, I went right to AIT, and after AIT, I took 19 days off. That before I went to Germany. And that's the way they just scheduled it. You know what I mean? And they have like a... And this was... Usually you would buy your tickets and stuff like that to fly home. But this was... To Germany, the army paid for it. And then the army paid for it to way home. Uh, the only thing I ever had to pay for was... Uh, was $4 for uh, headphones going there and $4 back. That was it. And I was in the hole for leave. So I didn't go on leave at all the two years I was in Germany. Because I was in the hole and then I started accumulating leave again. I had a whole bunch of leave. When I finally left Germany, I took like 35 days before going there to going to Fort Bragg. Um, but it was a real hassle. People asked, why didn't you take leave? Why did you stay the whole two years? Because it was that you had to take a two, eight hour train ride. Organize all that. Then you had to go one cab to take a cab to this one place and then take a cab to the next place because it was a high security area where that one uh, airport was. And then you had to wait. I waited overnight and it was just, it would just been aggravation. Cause I know this one girl went home, you know, when she was still, and it cost like thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars $1,400. That's the heck with that. So I wasn't home for Christmas or New Year's, the two years I was in Germany. And it was like from September... Maybe the end of August 88 to the end of August uh, 90. Well, anyways, the first New Year there, I went to, they had someone at the club. Now, the next year, I didn't go because they ruined it. They didn't do the, it right. I mean, that year I went to the club, I think it was uh, $10. I think it was $10 and you and uh, for the big New Year's Eve party. I think we got there, me and my roommate and some other friends got there at nine o'clock or eight o'clock 
And there was like all the champagne you drink, you just go to the bar and say, can I have some champagne? Bloop, 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 bloop. They give you champagne, you had snacks there. And then after all was done, they had like a breakfast, uh, like a little breakfast bar that you go through and, you know, like a cafeteria thing, you have breakfast there, all for like nine or ten bucks. You know, all the champagne you can drink. And I remember, you know, having fun and then, you know, some of the girls be there and they just grab, grab your face and kiss you real hard and stuff like that. Pretty awesome. And uh, I remember the bathrooms. The only bathroom i ever seen in uh, Germany, they had like this big basin where you call it a vomit. They used to call it vomitoriums in, in ancient Roman times. Big basin like this with like guards on it and stuff so no one fall in. And I guess you'd throw up in that or the people were smashing bottles in there. They were stuffing... They had champagne bottles stuffed in the toilets. It was a mad. It was messed up. Maybe that's why they ruined it the next year. Uh, but they had toilet. They had the. They were tr having the bottles shoved in the toilet. I don't think anyone smashed the toilet. I don't think. I know that one guy that was. He thought he was funny. He was an asshole. He uh, smashed the toilet with a thing of Donald Duck. Uh, they used to have the glass balls of Donald Duck. They had Donald Duck orange juice in. Germany, and they have like the bottle that you they have like the big can that you put like a thing like this, a thing like that. See, I get all those. That's so, it's so bothersome. You get that little notification about it, really comes out. And you have like a thing you put like the big clink in the big clink in there, and you pour it in. And they had that, and they had a the big glass bottle. He had a glass bottle, he smashed it in the toilet. He thought it was funny, but that's just stupid. And that guy's, oh, that guy's so funny. That guy's an asshole. I didn't care for him at all. And well, anyways, like I said, we had I had a great time at uh, that party. But next year, I think they changed it all around, so I didn't even bother going. It was too much of a hassle, so I just stayed home that next year. But the, I had a great time. That's a really the only time I really went out on New Year's Eve. Now, I mean, if uh, the stars aligned and stuff like that, you know, I might go out again. But you like just stay home New Year's Eve. But I'm doing this video for all of you. I hope you're enjoying this. And uh, I remember calling up my grandmother. And I said, you know, you had a nice New Year. Yeah, it was pretty nice. I talked to her about what happened in the club. And I made the mistake. I see, I had to get a champagne. I drank some. I didn't get drunk or nothing. I made a mistake saying, saying I didn't get drunk or nothing. And she's like, what? Not allowed to get drunk? Or something like that. We got in an argument and I... I said, nothing happened. I was good. I, but I really didn't get a buzz or nothing like that. Because I was getting drunk, but I didn't get a buzz. I mean, you, I mean, I, when I went in Germany, the one guy, this one guy said, you're going to pick up two things in Germany. You're going to start smoking. You're going to start drinking. I never start smoking because I don't, I smoke and, ugh, I tried it. I hated it. I didn't like feeling the, uh, the cigarette in my mouth. I'm like, ugh. As far as drinking's concerned, yeah, I started, I did start drinking. I mean, I drank a little bit before then, and then it was a slow progression. You know what I mean? I started getting real homesick, and I really started getting drinking a lot. But, I mean, I didn't get drunk that night at all. You know, I had a lot of champagne and stuff. And then she wrote me. So that was the end of that night. But, I, like I said, they ruined it the next night. Next year, and they, they I think they increased. Uh, they said it was a lot more expensive. And then you can do this. You had, like, limitations and stuff. It was like... This sucks. And last year was so much better. You know, unlimited snacks, unlimited champagne. Breakfast bar, like 10 bucks, baby. I might have been less. I don't remember. And uh, my grandmother wrote me this letter. You know, she wrote me a lot. And then the whole big page, she said, Don't drink. It only gets you into trouble. And that's one page. Oh, my God. But she likes being controlling anyways. When I got out of, when I left Germany, here's a story about my grandmother. Uh, took forever, an eight-hour train ride down that uh, thing. And I had spent overnight, uh, I was pretty much like this. I didn't go, I, did, I went uh, above where they had like the stack bar and stuff like that. Below, there's a big military thing, you know, I didn't have my military clothes on. Probably that military, and you know, all this other stuff. I forgot my t-shirt. I had, I packed my t-shirt. I, I went, when class days without my t-shirt, so they would have gave me hell for that. So I stayed up, up upstairs, and I didn't barely get any sleep on. I got to I got to board the plane early because I was helping some people who had kids and some uh, 
people who needed like help with handy who were handicapped and stuff on it because this was for civilians along with military you know and I saw the same twin girls that I remember seeing when I I, wrote, I arrived in Germany and uh, so I got there early I came back I, re I was exhausted mom picked me up I went through uh, you know I transferred I, I went to uh, Philly to uh, Pittsburgh and then no Philly to Erie and I was exhausted getting my bag and stuff like that. I was really tired. And Mom said, well, you're going to go and uh, get some sleep. I, I went to get some sleep. My grandmother called him and said, she said, she and Mom get her. And you said, you wake him up. He's not allowed to sleep in. He, you can't sleep in. He Wake him up. Wake him up. And then I got on the phone. And she says, you wake up. You're not allowed. I don't, Grammy don't want you sleeping in. No, I don't want you sleeping in. Controlling. And then, uh, you know, I just like, whatever. And then, and then my and mom said, uh, yeah, don't worry about it. You know, you don't have, you can sleep in if you want to. I said, I was going to do that anyways. You know, I mean, that's just bullshit on her part. She wants to control everyone, my grandmother. That's the way she was. Well, anyways, that's how the Army was for uh, New Year's and uh, how I celebrate New Year's usually. Like I said, tonight, I'm doing, I got my New Year's dinner on. And I'll be reviewing my New Year's dinner later on in the night, uh, New Year's night. So that I mean, like I said, I'm taking uh, notes right here. And like I said, at the end of this video, after the movie review, I'm gonna edit. Uh, I'm gonna edit the. Well, I gotta edit the part where I had to stop the video because my mom called up, and edit the uh, food review of uh, Great Value Spicy Pickles. You know. And next, I want to talk about the weather update. Now, the weather update is nuts. The weather has been really crazy. Now, last year, I've talked about this a lot. Uh, we didn't have... Well, I mean, compared to the... We had a very mild winter until Christmas Day. Well, Christmas... The night of Christmas Eve last year. Uh... We only got slammed one day this year, and that was like this one day in November. It's a Saturday. We got pretty much a foot and a half of snow. And I said, oh, no, it's going to be like this, like last year. Whereas last year, we had like a half inch because it was very mild, very mild until Christmas Eve. And then uh, Christmas Day, we got slammed with like three feet of snow, with it, and they called it historic snowfall, which is a very scary term. You know, we had like three feet of snow within a, a two or three days, and there was an emergency. They uh, closed off commercial traffic. We didn't get mail for two days. I didn't get mail two days. I still, I, by course, I still had to go to work. I didn't cancel that. Uh, well, anyways, this year, well, I mean, like New Year's Eve, I, my friend Jody Carnes, was saying you're supposed to get three feet of snow. Like, no way. Because it was really nice out until then last year. But no, we got we got slammed really bad. This year, sometime November, like uh, the one weekend, I it starts snowing. We got a foot and a half. John canceled the plans. We were hanging out. I said, it's too crappy. Let's not do that. I was, I was, all right, whatever. And then this year, I mean, and then it started cooling down. And then it would go... It would warm up and it would rain a ton, and then it would get cold again. Sometimes it would snow, sometimes it wouldn't. Most of the snow we got this year so far was in November. In December this year, I think we might have had five inches, maybe five and a half inches, and it doesn't even seem like that, you know. And it's been doing a thing where it get really cold and then freezing, and then it would warm up for a couple days, get cold, warm up, and it usually would snow a little bit or rain. And it's really muddy out, and then uh, it snowed on my birthday in the morning. I was, oh, John, oh no, John's gonna cancel. It started snowing pretty heavy and stopped, but it was maybe an inch, and that was it. And then the winds kicked up. The winds were kicking up like last uh, Thursday. The winds started kicking up really bad Wednesday night and the Thursday. Uh, and you can hear them. They're like forty mile an hour last last week. They're fifty mile an hour. And the one crazy thing about uh, the weather today. The temperatures. Well, let me talk about my, my birthday. You know, it was snowing really bad. And, uh, now I forgot. 
No, it was still really bad. I thought John was going to cancel. But it was still, it warmed up. It was like 38, 40. And then that night, it was supposed to get down in the 30s. And it was really slippery out. And we were my buddy Dan. And John's like, it's really bad. You want to crash my place? So, okay. And then I went back to my place the next day. And uh, tonight, uh, the weirdest thing with the weather, because it's warming up and then we're going to have a cold front hit. We're going to get the highest temperature, the temperature high at midnight, which would be when you, while well, this video uploaded, midnight, uh, New Year's, right New Year's Eve, a high of like 56 degrees. And then two hours later, it's going to go all the way down to 34 with the cold front hitting. And we might get some snow tomorrow. And then it's going to go back and forth. Not a lot of snow, but mostly rain. Either getting like somewhat cold and then somewhat warm and then back and forth like that. Mostly rain. And it rained a lot today. It was like... Some places are getting like an inch every, inch of rain every two hours, you know. So that's our crazy weather. Now, a couple of things about, let's see. Now, business updates. A couple of things. They had something on the news. They said the last Sears, I mean, not Sears, the last Kmart is set to close in March. And we still had one Kmart left in Erie. I used to, I used to love Kmart. I still love the name Kmart. And I think of S-Mart from uh, Army of the Dead. Think smart, think S smart. But Kmart was really a cool place to go to. I used to go there all the time. And uh, I think the last time I went to Kmart was 2008, 2009, or 2010. They used to have a pop called American Fair. If I could find it, I would definitely do a review of it now. They used to, uh, in the Meadville Mall, they had a Kmart in there. I think that Kmart closed down. But we still have one in Erie. Set to close in March unless there's someone that offers to buy the building or something. I'm not sure. But I haven't been to Kmart in a while. That's that's such a thing. And then, could uh, uh, building is on the way for their uh, dis, uh well, demolishing the Sears Automotive place because Sears actually went out of business and became and Peach Street opened up a new business called Sears Family or something like that. Family Sears, where basically it was just like a big something like the big thing, but all like mixed together in a warehouse in a big building. Because our Sears in the Milky Mall was two stories. And they have a couple of different divisions. They had a dental division, Sears Dental, and they had... Sears Automotive, which they're tearing down right now. If you remember when I did that video about friend request and unfriended, the social media movie that I was talking about Strangeland. And my dad was in Sears on Motor. He said he'd probably be there like three, four hours. They were doing something with uh, his family was going to change the tires or something. I can't remember. And I said, "Well, I'm going to just look around the mall." I said, "All right." And that's why I answered all those questions. They paid me fifteen bucks. Remember, if you saw the video, and I buy the movie Strange Land. It might have been the last time we went to. The last time I went to Sears Automotive, I'm pretty sure. I don't remember that 2001 or something like that. I can't remember. And they're going to tear it down and they're going to make a Sonic, which i would never been a Sonic before. The only Sonic I reviewed was those Sonic uh, Freezer Pops, the Ocean Wave and uh, Cherry Limeade or what it was. Those were really good. That's the only Sonic review I've ever done. So I'm very uh, looking forward to trying out uh, Sonic. For the first time, but I, that probably won't be to wave later on in the year. Maybe during the summertime, or maybe in the 2019. I don't know. I don't know how much construction is involved with that. And we have a Delta Sonic, but that's a uh, car wash. So those are the, that's the business update. Now on to the movie review. The movie review I'm reviewing is a slasher film called Madman. Now, I've been, I usually like most slasher movies. This, and I, I'm trying to be a completist and watching all the ones from the 80s. And there, I think there's a, there's a whole bunch, I mean, at least the slash films that played in theaters or drive-ins. This is one of those. Uh, there's a ton of slasher movies. I know there's one guy that was uploading movies, like all these ones I never heard of before, that were went to video. Or shot just exclusive video back in the video boom, and maybe in like in the early '90s, and I, I kind of thought out oh, a slasher thing there, like crap, like that fan of them all, Eric's Revenge. That was awful. Um, and Cisco and Ebert, 
And I used to talk about how I learned about movies from Cisco Niebuhr. And then they they did something I thought was really... I remember tell, mentioning something to Jennifer Petty about it. And she was saying, like, Gene Cisco did something horrible. I know that Tony Timpone was talking about... Uh, they started a petition to sign the Paramount to get them to stop releasing Friday the 13th. Or, uh... But I didn't know that uh, Gene Sisko actually, on one of his movie reviews, actually put... Uh, Oh, Bessie Palmer's inf personal information down for people who are bugger about being in the movie. That's that's pretty a lousy thing to do. So I lost respect for them. For that. Even though they hated the movies, I mean, I don't agree with that, but when they did the Dogs of the Week, a lot of horror fans used that as a template to find out about these movies they never heard of before. If they wouldn't have done that thing about the slasher film, but they didn't know what to call it, the Women in Danger or the woman's always in danger special, some people want to know about something. Like, as much as they talk to and bash that, um, I Spit on Your Grave movie, that's what gave, gave it its momentum. That's how people knew about it, through Roger Eber and Gene Siskel talking that much about it. Cause I guess when it was originally released, it didn't do anything. And then when Jerry Gross released it again in 81, it did a lot better. And then, like I said, they're all word of mouth through Gene Sisko and Ryan Ed became a cult classic. And I eventually saw it in, like, 85, maybe? And all the kids in school were talking about it. Well, anyway, they had, like, the uh, Dogs of the Week, and I was watching stuff on IMDb. They had a bunch of the old sneak previous movies. I was checking it, and they mentioned, a, they mentioned a horror film called Terror, not The Terror, Terror, which is really good. I really enjoyed that. It was on YouTube. I didn't. I would have known about it if I won't watch their show, because they're actually what they're doing is making people. They're giving a list of movies for people that I know that was completely not what their intention was, but that's what happened. And then Roger even mentioned a movie called Mad Men, which I never heard of before. Usually, I'm pretty good at the even the obscure slashers like The Prey, which I saw in Germany, or like Final Exam or Graduation Day, but Mad Men I never heard of before. And uh, I saw it was on YouTube. I didn't see it on YouTube. I watched it on uh, Amazon, and it was free on Amazon, too. It was some, some company called the, the Legacy Lives or Legend Lives. And uh, this revolves around a killer killing a bunch of Camp Callisters that summer camp. And it said, like, it all started at this camp for uh, gifted children. And you see the kids a little bit, and it mostly it's just Camp Callisters. And it starts off with this uh, guy singing this song about all these people that are going to they're going to befall the the killer and stuff like that. And they showed, like, little clips of them getting offed. And that would be, you see, throughout the movie. And then this guy, uh, Camp Cows, the main guy that owned the place, talked about Madman Mars. And said this guy lived in this one building right over there, like 300 feet away, right? This whole building. And he said that he was always mean to his wife and yelled at his children real bad. And then one night he snapped. Took an axe to his wife and to his kids. And then, you know, and then he took it to, uh, he went to the bar, placed the uh, axe right in the bar and started drinking. And all the townspeople found out what they did and they hang him. They hung him. They put him, and then the thing broke and then he, he ran away. No one ever could find him. They had a legend of Madman Mars. And then all of a sudden this guy said, Hey, Madman Mars, come and get me. And he took this rock, he threw it. 300 feet away and still smashed the window. And then apparently that awoke the woke Madman Mars and he went killing people. Now that part, up to that part, it was okay. And then he had to put up the, uh, the fire and, and run away. Not run away, these couple people ran. And then this guy went, looked around and then, of course, he ended up being the first victim. And then after that, it was really stupid. It was so boring. And the big, I mean, I usually like the Friday the 13th movies and stuff like that, but the cast they have is some of the most one-dimensional, uninteresting, unappealing people I've ever met in my life in a movie. And they look like, some of them look like half asleep or lay, lay in their sleepwalking through the whole movie. Everyone was off on it. You know, they, I mean, I talked about there were some kids in there, but I mean, the kids didn't get hurt. It was like a little bit like uh, Friday the 13th Part 6, which is a, a way, way better movie. But I mean, you didn't see the kids that much in it. You heard the kids a little bit at the beginning and a little bit at the end. That was it. He was after the camp counselors, and uh, it was really bad. And then, you know, the, I don't mind if a stupid movie or something like that, but this just ended up being boring. You know, the killer was interesting enough, but he just walked around, and he had like, uh, 
he had like a big uh, hair like this and big beard. And he kind of looked like that guy that was in uh, Christmas Horror Story. Kind of. Wasn't him, I don't think. He's not that old. And uh, it was really boring. I mean, the other, I mean, I like most Slash movies. The other movie, Slash movie, I thought would be good it was boring. He knows you're alone. And that was famous for having to be in the first movie Tom Hanks was in. And that was, uh, that movie was, was pretty good. I mean, he, the, he was on Dave Lambert and said it's called He Knows You're Alone because you're the only person in the theater watching it. But his scene in the movie was really good. But that movie was awful too. And this movie was bad too. It was really boring. And that really hurts the movie. It's that boring. But uh, the most unappealing cast of all time, you know, the camp counselors. I mean, Sleepaway Camp was really good. A lot of the other slash movies I like. I guess it's for completists only, but usually I like 80 slash films, but this was lousy along with um, he, uh, he Knows You're Alone. They're horrible movies. He Knows You're Alone, the first 10 minutes are really good and then it gets boring after that. Because uh, He Knows You're Alone, he, uh, the guy went to uh, get rid of uh, a brides to be, about brides who went to be married and most of it's playing for a wedding. And it was so boring. The Tom Hanks thing was going the first 10 minutes. That was it. And this one, the first 10 minutes, all right. And then there were little bits here and there. Like some of the kills were good. Some of them were done terribly. And there was a scene where this girl was, who was a horrible actress. Went to, well, and she couldn't even make a, she was like trying to climb up a hill and she was sliding. And they couldn't make that look realistic or look believable. I guess she was trying to open up this uh, the hood of this I think it was a jeep or a truck, I can't remember it went, and then she looked underneath and then uh, I guess the killer stepped on the thing and it cut her head off and then you see these guys later on in the, in the movie go to the truck try to start up and hear it clunk, 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 and her head was, I laughed because I thought that was funny, I have a sixth sense of humor but uh, the whole movie was really terrible I give that a 2 out of 10 it's very lucky I gave it that, Madman is awful so I hope you like this. Uh, so I guess that's it for my, see if I mention everything. Food and drink. Okay. So I hope you like this, my Jason Callens New Year's Eve special. Now, as a bonus, I'm going to edit. Well, I got to, well, it's so frustrating. You know, I have to edit these two parts when mom caught. I had to shut the video off. And I also edit uh, the food review I was going to put up tomorrow at noon. If I do put up uh, the video tomorrow at noon, it'll be something different. So I'm going to edit that out. I want to wish everybody a happy new year. And I love you all very much. I appreciate your support of the channel. I really do. I love you guys with the bomb, from the bottom of my heart. So I hope you like this New Year's Eve special now. Enjoy this special bonus food review. All right, here we go. Baby. Yeah, and here's a thumbnail for... Uh, Review of the Great Value Spicy Pickle Spears. I hope you liked the video, everybody. Oh, Happy New Year! Hey, my legion. How y'all doing today? I'm here today to review Great Value Spicy Pickles. Uh, pickle Spears, I should say. Fresh pack. No certified syn synthetic colors. And this was from uh, Walmart, of course. And this was a dollar thirty-nine. See how spicy they are. They got little bits of remnants of peppers on the bottom. I believe those are peppers. Said red bell pepper. And that's just red bell pepper. That makes it hot. Red bell pepper. It just says red peppers on there. I don't know what type it doesn't say. Because red bell peppers have no. Uh, being delicious though, they have no uh, capsaicin, so they have like a zero. They're like a zero on a Scoville unit. Not saying they're not good though, because I'd like bell peppers if you ever had the hot um, sausage and onion. Um, or if you ever had so hot sausage sandwich, uh, put the grilled pepper and onion on there. It's good with the bell peppers. So let's try, I try these out. This is what they look like. Let's try them out. I'm starting to taste a little spice to it. Very good. Salty, but not as salty as some of the other. I've had some other spice, but it was super salty.
You definitely can detect some spice, but nothing that melt your face off, you know. It's pretty good. Mm. Yeah, I like these. I think they're pretty decent. I give a dollar forty-four. It's not bad for a big jar. It's twenty-four ounce jar. I give the Great Value Spicy Pickle Spears. Oh, now, now the heat. Okay. Now he's starting to build up some on your back of your throat. I mean, not like I said, super, super hot, but definitely noticeable. I give the Great Value Spicy Pickle Spears 9.5 out of 10 are really good. I probably would give them a little higher score if they weren't. They're a little bit too salty, but not super salty. They're a little less salty. I probably would give them a little bit of a higher score, but they're, they're wonderful. I know pickles are supposed to be salty, but sometimes they really overdo it. So I hope you like this video, buddy. Until next time, please. Can my legion. Again.